Friends, we're going to turn now to the Gospel of Mark. Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, is our scripture for today. And you can find it in your pew Bible, or you can look in your bulletin. It's printed there for your convenience, or you can look on your smartphone or other device and follow along with us. We're going to look at chapter 4, verse 26 through 34. And you'll find that it's two parables, two parables that Jesus is telling there on the Sea of Galilee, teaching other people who would come and listen, but also his disciples whom he has just called to follow him. So I invite you to hear these words or read along uh, in your bulletin or Bible. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would not sprout, would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So as I mentioned, Jesus is, is teaching the people who are gathered together and the disciples near the Sea of Galilee He's still working around this area of the Sea of Galilee, teaching and describing the kingdom of God to people. He's hoping to help them understand God a bit better. He's hoping that they will connect with him. He, they will connect with God's word. They will connect with truth in a radically different way than they have been exposed to to this point. He's teaching them. Sometimes he would even get out into the boat go out a little bit from the shore and teach to people from the boat. And the water would help carry his voice and amplify it to the people standing on the shore. So Jesus is doing this. He's teaching people. And in chapter 4, he starts using all of these seed analogies, these metaphors that he uses within a parable. He talks about the different soils that you can plant seed in and what happens to the plant as it grows. And then we turn in chapter 4, verse 26, to these two parables, again, about seeds. And the first parable is all about how someone goes out and sows the seed, and then they're done. They don't do anything else. And it says, the earth produces of itself. The seed begins to grow roots. And the seedling escapes from the ground and starts growing towards the sun. The sower does nothing else but just plants the seed and everything goes from there. In fact, the word that describes it in Greek is connected to our word automatic. The idea is the seed is planted and automatically things produce from there. And then the second parable is about the mustard seed. And Stanley talked a little bit about this analogy, this metaphor in his children's moment. This tiny seed is planted and it grows to one of the biggest shrubs in that region. This tiny little seed has a way of growing into this large bush. But not only that, but not only that, we find through history that the mustard bush, this mustard bush is invasive. It just spreads like wildfire all over the place. And so not only is the kingdom of God like a mustard seed, a small thing that grows into something large, but it grows everywhere. It spreads all over the place. Maybe our Southeast United States example would be kudzu. You've seen kudzu. You probably have fought kudzu on your property somewhere. It's difficult to get rid of, isn't it? It just grows. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like that. Turn to somebody sitting beside you and say, the kingdom of God is like kudzu.
That was disappointing. <laughs> that was dis. Angela, you see what just happened? Okay, let's try that again. The kingdom of God is like kudzu. The kingdom of God is like kudzu. <laughs> that was much better, but somebody had their timing wrong. All right, the kingdom of God is like this. It's this small thing that grows automatically. It's this small thing that grows into something large. And there's not much that the people have to do with it. There's not much control that people have over it. It seems like Jesus is saying that this is God's work. We're a part of it. But we cannot tell the kingdom of God how to grow, where to grow, what to do. I've been thinking a lot about this this past week, about how we try to control things that are out of our control. In fact, I was talking to my kids, we were driving down the road, and I told Lena and I told Davis, you guys are growing up too fast, okay? Stop it. <laughs> don't grow up anymore. Lena, I want you to not go to the fourth grade. Davis, I don't want you, want you to go to kindergarten. And they both just flat out told me no. They were kind of like you, not really following directions. And so I kept pressing on this. I said, I don't want you to grow up. Stop growing up. I want you to stop. And Davis piped up, just like he did in the children's moment. And Davis said, Daddy, we have to. It's part of nature. <laughs> so I'm already getting scolded by my five-year-old. It's part of nature. It was his way of saying, Dad, it's out of your control. You can't do anything about it. The clock ticks. We want to slow it down. Sometimes we want to speed it up. But I think most of the time we want to slow it down. And there's nothing we can do. Second adds upon second. Minute adds upon minute. It's out of our control. There are many things like that that are in our lives that are out of our control that we yet desire to control. We can help our lives. We can direct our lives. We can be a part of growing well, but we cannot really control it. I cannot tell my kids to stop growing. I cannot tell my birthday to stop coming. I cannot tell you exactly what you need to do because you will decide on your own all I can do is suggest guide give options all I can do with the clock is make the best of every single second that I have and try my hardest to be with the people I know and love, and to try with every single second to be who God has asked me to be for the sake of his kingdom and others around me. That's all we can do. That's all we can do because we cannot slow or speed up the clock. It's out of our control. And this is maybe how Jesus is describing the kingdom of God in the first parable. We cannot tell the kingdom of God how to be, what to be, where to grow, where not to grow. That's up to God. All we can do with our minutes and seconds within God's kingdom is to try to be used in each moment. To allow where the kingdom of God is, is spreading and growing for us to be used in that moment to help give it the nourishment it needs. That's what we can do. It is going to grow, it is going to spread, it is going to be invasive in the way that God has planned. We can't control it. And you notice that the first parable almost says that there's almost no tending needed. There's not much that the sower can do but just plant it and allow the earth to produce it as well. Now, that doesn't mean that we should not be involved in gardening and nurturing the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't be going out and trying to bring hope and love and justice. I think what it's saying is, is that even if we don't, the kingdom of God has a way of finding its way forward. 
the kingdom of God, the truth of Jesus, his love, his grace, his compassion, will be able to find its way where it is most needed, even if we decline to get involved. But instead, we can be involved. We can do something. We can allow things to happen through us and find that we can be a blessing in the midst of it. I'm reminded of a famous saying by Martin Luther. Martin Luther, you know, tacked up the 95 theses on the door of the church, helped start the Protestant Reformation. Well, it says in one of his diaries that Martin Luther said he worked tirelessly to oppose the ways in which the church was abusing the people. And this is what he said. This is what he said about what he did. I simply taught, preached, and wrote God's word. Otherwise, I did nothing else. And while I slept, or while I drank Wittenberg beer with my friends, Philip and Amsdorf, the word so greatly weakened the papacy that no prince or emperor ever inflicted such losses upon it. I did nothing. The word did everything. Do you hear what Martin Luther is saying is that all he did was show up and preach and teach, and yet the kingdom of God did all the work. He didn't force change. He didn't force people into change. He did not force the institution to change. He just simply allowed God's word to speak through him. And I think this is maybe the model that we can look at. The kingdom of God is going to grow. It is going to spread. It is going to be like kudzu. And the question is, will we get involved and be a part of what's happening? Will we put ourselves out there not knowing how to control it or be a part of it? Will we get involved and see how God can use us in the midst of the kingdom of God? Because it is going to grow with or without us. What this really requires is for us to have radical trust in God. For us to really trust in Him, not knowing what is going to happen to us, not knowing how the kingdom of God will spread, but for us to trust God enough to get into the foxholes of the kingdom and see what will happen to put our trust in him and to walk out there and to be used in whatever way possible. Trust. I learned a little bit about trust as a high school student on my very first ski trip. Have anybody ever been snow skiing before? Now, I'm from South Carolina, and so we didn't go, you know, all the way up to West Virginia or to Utah for great skiing, we went to North Carolina. We went to this mountain called Beach Mountain. Anybody ever been to Beach Mountain to ski? A couple people have. It's not too cold at Beach Mountain. They have to make their own snow. And when it warms up to about 50 degrees, that ice will melt, the water, the snow will melt and it turn into ice. And so you literally are skiing on ice. It's, it's one step up from ice skating. And I went up on my first trip, and as a young teenager, I thought, you know what? I don't need to go to ski school. So I got on that ski lift, and when I came down off the ski lift onto that ramp, I fell over. And it took me about 15 minutes to get back on my skis. And I went down that mountain, and I figured out just how out of control our lives are as I was going down that mountain on that ice and I realized I never learned how to stop (laughs) and I didn't really ever know how to ski and so I just went straight you ever heard of stop drop and roll I figured out as I was going probably about 45 miles an hour down that hill the only way I can stop is to fall over and hope that I slide or roll and I don't run into a tree or a person. And that is how I learned to ski. I learned to ski by going down and falling over. And the other thing I realized is is that once you get off that ski lift, you are going to get down off the mountain. It is inevitable. You're either going to ski down it, fall down it, or you're going to be pulled off of it on a stretcher. But you're going to get down the mountain. 
It's going to happen one way or another. Most of the time I was able to get down, my friends had maybe even skied down twice by the time I got down once, from going straight, falling over, going straight, falling over. My second year, I learned how to zigzag. And have you ever seen someone trying to learn how to ski and they go like this, and then they go back around like this? It took me almost just as long to get down the mountain and I was going in and out of people, but I made it down the mountain. And then finally, after my third year, I got much better at trusting the slope and working with the snow and getting down the mountain. You're going to get down the mountain. It is going to happen. It is inevitable. The question is, when you go down it, will you fight? Or will you trust the snow? Will you use your skis to help direct you because that gravitational pull is pulling you down? How will you trust? How will you guide yourself? How will you get down? The kingdom of God is like this. It is pulling in one direction. It is going to the future. It is spreading forward. And being a part of God's kingdom is kind of like skiing down Beach Mountain. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. You don't know where God is going to pull you. All you can do is put yourself out there and go. And trust in Him. The kingdom of God is like that. It has been planted. And it is springing up all around us in plain sight. Will we, will we do our part? Or will we watch it grow as we fall asleep and wake up and have no part in it? Friends, I feel like we are called as God's people to put ourselves out there and to be a part of what God is doing in the kingdom of God. For it will continue to grow. And thanks be to God for that. Amen and amen.